Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. At the time of communion, there will be further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the door through which you entered the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt, and our gathering hymn is number 450 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Around the Throne, a Glorious Band, number 450. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Well, it's nice to know that even our musicians can get mixed up sometime. We come together as people of faith to give God praise on this memorial of St. Paul Miki and companions. 414 years ago today, these 26 men gave their lives for the faith in Nagasaki, Japan, that we may worthily remember them in our prayers today and give God thanks for their witness and bring to the Lord our own prayers and petitions. We pause to call to mind God's goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of all the saints, who through the cross were pleased to call the martyrs St. Paul, Miki, and companions to life, grant, we pray, that by their intercession we may hold with courage even until death to the faith that we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. 
Through Jesus Christ, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls and will give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with sighing, for they would be, that would be harmful to you. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do, do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Psalm refrain is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After returning from their first mission, the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Commenting on today's Gospel passage where Jesus invites the apostles to go away to a quiet place, the Word Among Us commentator uh, quotes uh, a, a, a passage from Cardinal Hans Urs van Balasar, uh, his book Prayer. He says, Harassed by life, exhausted, we look, us, look about us for somewhere to be quiet, to be genuine, a place of refreshment, to restore our spirits in God, to simply let go in him and gain new strength to go on living. I think sometimes maybe that's the way we feel as we come to Mass. We're coming away to a quiet place where we can be alone with the Lord, where we can let go in Him. And I think that message is very much expressed in our responsorial psalm today, that the Good Shepherd psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He brings me to a place of repose, a quiet place, a place of silence and peace. I think, when I think about Paul Meekie and his companions in the second reading of the office for today, it gives an account of their martyrdom. And it talks about uh, how they were very peaceful. They were were strung up on crosses, and and, uh, the uh, way of execution was these um, executioners came with these long spears, uh, and they would drive them uh, into the heart uh, of the person. So there they were uh, with many Christians gathered around them uh, and uh, they were very much at peace and and apparently one of them, uh, when one of the bystanders said, soon you will be with God, his whole body sort of ached as if he was going, arched as if he was going up to heaven. And so, you know, when I read this passage from uh, the Cardinal and and, uh, look at the readings today, I think that those good men because of the deepness of their faith and their trust in God they really felt that sense that they were going to God to let go in him, to let go in him and to be in his eternal kingdom and I guess really for us as people of faith uh, ultimately our hope and prayer is that when our time comes, uh, when we are called to the Lord, whether it be through old age or an accident or some disease Uh, that when that time comes, we will have that sense as well of being at peace, that we're going to the Lord, of letting go in God. As we continue in our Mass today, we thank the Lord for the gift of our faith and we ask Him to help us, to nourish us through this Eucharist, that we might be faithful to Him and that we might have the grace and strength we need to live our faith well and to have that peace, that willingness and desire to let go in Him in that time when he calls us to our eternal reward. With confidence in God's goodness and recognizing our need of his assistance, let us stand and offer to him our prayers of petition. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all our civil and religious leaders that they may be open to God and that they may seek day by day to lead with justice and mercy. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith that day by day we may nourish that gift and may seek to draw closer to the Lord in prayer and in goodness. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those people for whom today is a trial, uh, who are dealing with any type of illness or persecution or hurt or worry, that in the midst of their trials they may feel God's presence, his peace, and his consolation. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts. That they, that, for they are offered to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, St. Paul, Miki, and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul Miki and his companions, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing.
communion hymn is number 6.4 in Celebrate in Song. Let us be bread. Number 6.4. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shed, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, 
graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not sustain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 452 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Let all on earth their voices raise, number 452. <laughs> 